So in a calculus course, ultimately what you want to understand about sequences is what they behave like as n goes to infinity. So um, our goal, explicitly, will be to find the limit of the nth term of a sequence as n goes to infinity. And if, if um, such a number exists, and let's say that number is called L, then we'll say that the limit as n goes to infinity of the sequence is equal to L. Um, and we would say that the sequence converges to L. And the definition of diverge is just that um, a sequence diverges if it doesn't converge. All right. So if any other any other value um, appears as the answer to a limit question, and it's not a one unique number, then we would say that the sequence diverges. So divergence can happen in in a few different ways, which we'll we'll come across. So the methods we'll use, um, one would just be intuition. Um, you don't need a whole lot of um, theorems to understand what's happening to sequences in many cases. So for instance, the sequence defined by 5 times n, if we were to ask the question, what's the limit as n goes to infinity of 5 times n, I think most of us understand that as n gets bigger and bigger, then the values of the sequence get bigger and bigger, so this is just going to be infinity. And so we would say diverge. We would say the sequence diverges. Um, another method we'll use is we'll, we'll understand sequences by comparing them to the functions rel related to them whose domain are all real numbers. So think about you know the sequence cosine of pi n. I really should have parentheses around it, I apologize. Cosine of pi n divided by n. Um, to understand this, I mean, and again, I, we talked about how you could graph it in your calculator, but it's much easier to graph functions where the domains are, um, the domain is real numbers. You can just compare that to the behavior of cosine of pi x over x, whose graph is below. Because if you think about it, the, all the values of this function are contained in the values of the, um, of the one whose domain are all real numbers. And so whatever whatever this guy's doing on the right, the sequence is doing as well. And so from the graph below, we can see that since this goes to zero, as in, uh, as x goes to infinity, sorry, as x goes to infinity, we know that this goes to zero as well. All right, and you can see that as this this damped oscillation effect. But the farther out you go, the closer you, you are to zero. And you can get as close as you want to zero just by going far enough out. Um, there are some very nice intuitive rules you can apply using, uh, using um, these definitions below. You can apply them to sequences. Um, and they can, help un they can help make sense of problems where the terms seem somewhat convoluted. If you separate them and treat them separately, um, they can be much easier to evaluate. So what's nice is that these are all pretty intuitive. I'm not going to go over those in detail, but just deal with them if they come up. So one useful theorem we're going to apply right away is what I mentioned in the slide before, which is that we can compare we can compare a sequence to the function related to it where the domain are all real numbers. So if we take, for instance, um, if you take the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x, we know that that equals 0, right? As x gets bigger and bigger, uh, as x gets bigger and bigger, that ratio goes towards 0. Um, and if you think about this sequence, it actually satisfies this condition, right? Right, so for instance, f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, in terms of our function, I should have named this, let's call that f of x. In terms of our function f of x, if we just input positive integers, we're basically producing this sequence here, a sub n. Um, we can understand the behavior of that just by looking at the behavior of what happened over here on the left when we looked at the limit as x goes to infinity. So that just means that this is clearly 0 as well. All right, and so this graph, this graph below kind of gets at what's happening there. I mean, we, we, at this point, you probably can, you probably have analyzed functions of x, who's, where the domain is real numbers. 
you get these nice graphs which are smooth and connected. If we can understand the behavior of those, well, the behavior of those are going to be the behavior of the sequence related to them as well. And that's all we're saying. Um, so, for instance, if, if you had a sequence below here, a sub n equals 5n minus 3 over n, um, there's a couple ways you can view that, but one thing you could do is you could say, well, I'm going to compare that to um, f of x equals 5x minus 3 divided by x. We know that the limit as x goes to infinity of 5x minus 3 over x, well that's just the limit as x goes to infinity of 5x over x minus 3 over x which is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of 5 minus 3 over x. Now as x goes to infinity we can see that goes to 5 minus 0 which is just 5. We can say that a of n goes to 5 as well. Um, so that might seem overly rigorous for something that seems obvious, and that's fine. Um, just understand that if, if, you for, if you don't put in these x's and, and actually make the direct comparison underlying what you're doing, if you just leave them as n's, ultimately what you're doing is you are just comparing them to the, the real valued functions. Um, so similarly, we could do the one on the right like that. We could say um, this is going to behave like... f of x equals 2x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 3. And let's see if I can zoom in a little bit here so it's not so crowded. And since the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 3, um, so if you wanted to, I think every, hopefully at this point you understand that this is just going to be the ratio of the leading terms, right? In the long run, that plus 1 is not really important, and the plus 3 is not as, as well. So this is equal to, if you just do an n behavior model, this is equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of x 2x squared over x squared, which we can see is equal to 2. That just means that this... is equal to 2 as well. All right, so that's a very easy, useful theorem that will probably be applied often, even if you're not aware that you're doing it. Um, and it's a way for us to identify the convergence or divergence of certain sequences very quickly.